So comparison is the thief of joy. Joy. I had no joy because I was always comparing myself because I grew up with such a fear of rejection. And it wasn't until, uh, of course, you know, I'm a person of faith. God healed the relationship between yeah. my dad and I, but that put a confidence in me that it stripped away just that bondage of where I was in my mind. You often see in my content, I say the mind is the control tower to the body. As you think, so you will be. Three, two, one. Huffing and puffing, so out of style. There's another energy to power to ride. Let's achieve your goals to joy, not stress. It's a men green. You cool podcast. Well, hello you. Welcome to the Men Green Ukulele podcast where we talk about achieving your goals through joy instead of stress. I'm your host, Geneviève Pépin. I'm a productivity coach and a mindset specialist, and I'm here to have meaningful conversations to gather some tools and insights to help you identify what is achieving your goals through joy for you and put that into practice. Today, we're talking about finding your own pace. You know, it's so easy to take somebody else's blueprint and apply it to our lives, but what if we don't feel right with that, right? How do we find our own pace? And that's what I'm talking about with my guest today, Jamal Marshall. And without waiting anymore, let's dive into Juicy Stories and Meaty Ketchup. Juicy Stories and Meaty Ketchup, Meaty, meaty, meaty Ketchup. ketchup. Welcome to the Mint Green Ukulele Podcast, where we talk about achieving through joy instead of stress. We're getting right into juicy stories and meaty ketchup. And here I am with my guest today, Jamal Marshall. Hey, Jamal. What's up, Jen? How you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm excited. What about you? I'm excited as well. Happy yeah. Monday morning to you. Oh, yeah. A happy Monday morning. Um, look, Jamal, we're going to get right into it today. Um, but before that, I want to... I wanna, Say a little bit more about what the audience needs to know about you before we get into this juicy conversation. So, Jamal, you're a global lead at International Justice Mission, and you have a passion for counseling, mentoring, and advising. And in fact, you're a certified counselor and mental health advocate, and you're also the host of Listen, Then Speak podcast, which is awesome, uh, a podcast that addresses topics at the intersection of culture, ethnicity, mental health, religion, and how, how they are intertwined with both the career journey and the journey of life. What a, That's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what a, a, a meaningful conversations, a lot of meaningful conversations on this podcast. I highly recommend it to you out there. Um, look, Jamal, uh, you are also a lot, uh, you know, a lot of what you talk about um, is uh, understanding uh, your own journey and also setting boundaries. And you know that here we talk a lot about joy and achieving through joy. So I like to start with my typical question, which is, what does joy mean to you? Joy means being content with who I am. Uh, and joy to me means I'm not comparing myself with the perception of what I see another person as. And when I say perception, especially in the online space, because most of us are still so questioned in our homes, we're seeing a perception. I call that Instagram life. It's like we see content run through Fiverr, through Canva, and through all these editing things. It's like, I wish I had his life. I wish I had her life. I wish I had their marriage. I wish I had their vacation. And no one sees all the things that happen behind the scenes. So Joy says, you know what? I'm all right with me. And I'm all right with my journey and where I am. And the places that I'm discontent are the places that need improving, the places that need uh, where I need to level up and I'm leveling up at my pace. That's what joy means to me. And joy means I don't have happiness the way online and brand people define happiness. Joy means I have fulfillment in my journey. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. I, I'm, you said um, going at your own pace, which I would love to get back to, but I'd love to hear, what was there a journey for you to get to that definition of joy for you today, to be or to be ful uh, fulfilled and content with who you are? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, another podcaster, Peter Duran, I don't know how well you know him. He's a he's a one of the person who works in talent acquisition. I talked a lot about my childhood when I was a guest on his podcast and coming from a, a childhood that was very uh, abusive. Oftentimes, I felt like I was the only male that didn't have this X factor that other guys did. So I compared mm -hmm. myself and sized myself up with every other guy. And in doing that, 
I felt like I was never good enough. I never looked good enough. I was never tall enough or even in some places short enough build enough or maybe too much and there were seasons in my life where it's like oh he thinks he's all that or he's arrogant or he's not arrogant enough it was just all these comparisons and so comparison is the thief of joy joy i had no joy because i was always comparing myself because i grew up with such a fear of rejection and it wasn't until uh, of course you know i'm a person of faith god healed the relationship between yeah. my dad and i but that put a confidence in me that it stripped away just that bondage of where I was in my mind. You often see in my content, I say the mind is the control tower to the body. As you think, so you will be. Mm. And so that, that journey of joy has been a, a life journey, you know, from my 20s into my 30s, where I started actually addressing these things. Uh, before I became a certified counselor, I went through counseling myself. I believe yeah. you need to take that journey before you start helping others. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh you know, when you talk about um, uh, comparing yourself and all having like looking at the, you know, the the X factors and so on, um, it's so easy to to and it can also be useful to sometimes, you know, look up to others and choose like, OK, like, you know, I relate to this and I'm going to uh, take a little bit of that person's journey or experience in order to, you know, advance on my own and so on. Um, uh, however, there, there comes a time where there may be a disconnect, right? Or some frustration or stress or anxiety or some symptoms that come to the surface and that say, well, actually it's time to find your own, uh, your own self and your own pace. And especially, you know, if when you want to, when you're ambitious and want to achieve great things in your life or you're an entrepreneur or, you know, you're building a career, um, uh, it's, it's that like finding what works for you Right. Um, how would you how would you define finding your own pace in order to create success? I think in our fast paced society, especially here in the West and especially in the in the online world, you see such a quick pace of, of what business leaders are doing, career folks are doing, recruiters are saying, entrepreneurs are doing. Um, one person that's really popular in that space, of course, is Gary Vee, who doesn't know the name Gary Vee. But people look and they don't see the journey that Gary Vee had to take. And they even look at all those bits of content across what LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, he's got YouTube. He's got content everywhere. He's also got a team of a lot of people that keep that machine running. And so it's like people are trying to run at the Gary Vee pace, but they may not have the Gary Vee machine and they may wear themselves out in a manner that isn't sustainable for them. And so it's like, how do I take what I see in Gary Vee? And I'm just using him as one example. There's yeah. many other and put my own nuances on it in a way where I still keep my head and my heart and still don't violate my conscience. That's what it means to go at your own pace. Yeah. You know, what were the tools that you that were most useful to you to to find and define your own pace? Um, I don't know how well your audience <laughs> may, may jam with this, but my faith is huge. You mm -hmm. know, the Bible. That's, that's a huge tool. And I'm not talking about mm. reading it. I'm not talking about sitting under a pastor. I'm talking about studying it, spending time in what I call the word of God, which is which I believe is infallible. And actually also you notice in my videos, walking out in nature, connecting yes. with creation, connecting with God's creation, getting still, silence. People always talk about breaking up the noise, but they spend all day on this in noise. When you get away from the noise and get quiet, there's a reality that says, you know what? This is what's going to help me define the path that I'm to go in, not the path that all 10 of my friends are going in, but where am I to go? How do I stand out as a leader? And it takes a concerted effort to get still and to get quiet. Now, whatever a person's faith may be, even if you're an atheist or agnostic, you need to connect with something that helps you get quiet. For me, it's the Bible. For me, it's Jesus Christ. You know, that's what helps me. And so now I'm not here to convert anybody, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. for me, that is just what I choose to connect to, but I would say if you're not connected to anything and you're only connecting to your phone, you will get caught in the matrix and you will live your life in a manner that is unsustainable and you'll wear yourself and other people out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that that sometimes, and, and of course it's not about, like it, it's not about converting everybody. I, I think that it's so rich to talk with people with different perspectives and different point of view too, because different things work for different people as well. And, and we all choose what works for us. And also I find, and not I'm not necessarily talking about faith here, but, but some things work for us at different times in our life as well. 
you know, life is not a straight line. Like there's like many uh, different phases and many different seasons and uh, uh, really finding and being honest with ourselves with, you know, what inspires us and what works for us and what doesn't. I find that, I mean, it's been, it's been a journey for me because I, I, I was really addicted to, to certainty, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to like, I really want to know, I want to have the answer, right? And this is work and, you know, this is work that, that I'm still practicing to be more comfortable with uncertainty and more the I don't know and that you don't arrive somewhere like you're just really in the moment and evolving. And I think that for me, when you talk about, you know, being still and finding something that um, that helps that that helps you be still and understand yourself, like I find that this varies a lot. I don't know how that journey was for you. It does vary from person to person. Yeah. And again, I have clients that are people who don't have the same faith I have or the same yeah. background, the same culture. Mm. You know, I believe if you're in a space and you're just in your own enclave, you learn very little. Yeah. Um, and so that that journey for me, from one who's grew up, I'm from originally from L.A., Los Angeles, California. Mm. Now I live in D.C. So in major cities, there's always a lot of noise. And so it took me being very proactive and intentional to say, I need to get quiet because the quiet is going to help me get away from the noise and actually hear my thoughts Yeah. and then challenge some of those thoughts, challenge uh -huh. what's been handed down to me and actually say, okay, why is that? You know, ask good questions, you know, ask good questions of yourself. <laughs> yeah. Don't be afraid to dig. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to dig a little bit more about that because I think that sometimes it's possible to get lost a little bit in the stillness or lost in our own thoughts and what is ours and what is not ours. Right. And, um, uh, I'd, I'd be curious to, 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 to hear more about, you know, those questions or how, you know, what is your process when you guide people through this? Yeah. My process is also, I have, uh, when I'm working with clients, I have them journal for a certain amount of time a day. Uh, um, one thing I tell each of my clients, what you have to write, you have to reckon with. What you write down, once it's visible to you, it's like, oh, I need to reckon with that. Because when it's just here, it can easily kind of just get lost in the gray matter of your mind. Yeah. When you write it down, it's like, oh, I am thinking that. Or oh, I did go through that. Oh, that was traumatic for me. Oh, I do need to question that. Yeah. And then you begin to take that journey because it, it can get lost very easily here yeah journaling is very very powerful damn it is oh so yeah important to write things down and then to take the journey whether i wouldn't encourage someone to do it alone but with another person that's trusted take the journey to address what you've written down mm. wow and like do you mean like reading it out loud or reflecting on it um sharing what each other is is thinking of or what does that process look like? Yeah, and I would like? say, you know, sometimes people may open up their journal online. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says it's the discretion of a man that preserves him. Sometimes those deeper thoughts or those yeah. more traumatic thoughts, everyone may not be worthy of that because everyone may not be built to handle that. And so there are very few people sometimes in our circle that can handle the depth of who Genevieve is, yeah. you know? It's like that, it, it may not be for me, but for your best friend, your cousin, your mom, your aunt, someone you're really tight with, someone who understands you and someone who's taken a journey a couple of paces ahead of you. It's like, they can handle that, you know? So process that in a way that's redemptive because if you process too openly, too quick, it can be destructive. And then as they call the online trolls come after you start, you start questioning the very thing you put out there. And it's just like, it wasn't for them to process yet. It, it, that wasn't the season, you know? Mm, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that, that, you know, finding that safe space to be able to share and so on. Um, you know, <laughs> when you, when you, when you talk about journaling, you know, journaling is part of my handling task in my day. Like this is something that I prioritize in, 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 in my day, because for me, if I don't journal, like my mind can wander and I can be, you know, I can die, go into confusion. And even as a productivity tool for me to get really like uh, aligned on, you know, what's important today and what do I want to focus on and so on. Um, and creating the time to do that, cre to create that mind space and to have that time leading me to creating the boundaries. And I'd love to hear about, um, you know, your experience with setting boundaries in order to create that time for yourself and how you work with clients through that. 
Awesome. Good question. And I'm so <laughs> glad that I'm talking to another journal or so I feel yeah. like preaching to the choir here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, for me, growing up the way, you know, that I did um, early on before my dad's life was changed. Of course, he's no longer here with us. You know my story. Mm -hmm. um, I also had a mom who was doing the best she could because she had to play both roles for us children. Mm -hmm. um, but also when there's something that's lacking, I, you overcompensate. And so for me, I was very, in a sense, as a young teenager, underdeveloped. Um, mm. And you, you typically, when there's so much chaos, for me, the way it affected me and the way I was traumatized is that I felt like, okay, I got to bring some happiness here. So happiness for me was not telling anyone no. Happiness for me was being very agreeable. Happiness mm. for me was never standing up for what did I want, you know? And yeah. granted, as a, as a teenager, you need to respect your parents. It's not going to be so much about what you want, at least in my culture. <laughs> so I had to learn that no is a sacred word. You know, no is a holy word. And I don't want to make this even religious, but sacred means when I say no, I mean it. Yeah. Maybe if I say hell no, I mean it, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. uh, and so I never... I was always the type of Jamal's the, the wise one, Jamal's the smart one, Jamal's the amiable one. I never gave anyone a reason not to like me because I struggled with such a fear of rejection. I knew, okay, outside the house, I'm not going to be rejected by anybody because uh -huh. I had rejection coming from my father. And so when I work with clients, there's usually, you know, most of my clients are always the lurkers because who's going to come, you know, most folks come into my comment section as a superhero. <laughs> no one wants to admit these things because what you write and put online, you can't get back. And so mm. I understand, it. I'm not expecting people to answer the questions I'm asking. My content's mm -hmm. pretty heavy, but the lurkers, they'll come into the DMs and like, okay, I saw that. What's your process? You know, when do we get started? Boom, boom, boom. And so one of the books I counseled through is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, mm -hmm. just to kind of get the mind churned yeah. and, and, and ready. And that is just kind of a, a template. You know, I, I specifically tailor make the counseling to fit the person's need. You know, I don't have anything against online courses, but you can tip, you can almost go over the person's head if it's too automated and it yeah. doesn't address yeah. their need. Absolutely. Because a female client is going to have a different need from a male client. Yeah. And depending on the person's age or their trauma or their childhood, it's just going to be different. And so I'm working to tailor it to the person specifically. So most of my ideal clients are the perfectionists, the procrastinators, you know, the people pleasers, those who are always saying yes. And they said yes to so many other things and so many people. Yeah. They have not said yes to their journey and where they need to be. And mm. so they may be very well liked, but they're also full of criticism and resentment. Amen to this. I seriously like this is the, yes, I can very much relate. And and. I would love, I'd love to ask, how do you get a people pleaser to sit down and journal, to say yes to themselves? Well, I believe a good counselor gives good homework. <laughs> um, because it's tailored to the person, I try to go at a pace that is doable for them with their career or their schedule. But the homework between, because we're, we're meeting weekly, yeah. between now and the next time we meet, you need to be processing these things. Otherwise, yeah. you're just wasting your time and your money. Uh -huh. um, and so I'm, I'm giving homework out of seven habits, but also it's so many other tools that I'm using and also saying at least journal for me 15 minutes a day. You mm. know, if you can put that in, you, you begin to put those reps in just like you and me, when we go running or jogging, it's just like, okay, the first three weeks, I really hate this. Yeah. <laughs> and then you start looking forward to, because you see the benefit. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's just a dry, I call it dry obedience, devoid of any feeling when yeah. you start, okay, I need to process this and then reckon with this. And so you know, and I don't want the homework to become a law for them because that'd be another way of, oh, I got my homework done. It's like, this is your homework's for you. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. But Absolutely. we're going over your homework to actually process what last week's lesson was. Every session, it's like a soap opera, feeds off the last session. Mm. It should, it's always should be a progression, but it's like a pacemaker. There are going to be some weeks that are really up and it's a lot of them. I, I'm working with a client right now. I'm just like, man, look at where you are in week 10 versus week one. Yeah. And then there's some weeks it's like, okay, I'm in the Valley. You know, I was asked to do this or a family member asked me to do this or a supervisor manager. I just, I, and I, I, I acquiesced. Yeah. Or I felt like I had to do something or I, I said yes. And I hated it. Mm. <laughs> you know, So. Which noticing this is often a win as well, right? When you start something and then you have, you know, you engage into patterns that 
you know, maybe serving or maybe not serving anymore and just noticing this is like, huh, now I see it a little bit more clearly that, you know, maybe I could address this differently or I could set conditions differently to to be able to say yes to myself. That's it. Yeah. And it, it takes practice and it takes work. Another book I also worked through was Atomic Habits. Mm. You know, you hear the word. I mean, we both are active in the space on LinkedIn about, about goals. And there's nothing wrong with having goals and having mile markers, but atomic habits are going to be what changes the mind and the heart and affects the will. It's going to affect what you carry out. Absolutely. Because once you achieve a goal, I've, I've had times and seasons where I've lost 50 pounds and gained 60 pounds back because it's like, oh, I, I got the goal. But if I'm developing the atomic habit of eating, especially at my age, according to my blood type, yeah, that's a habit that is sustainable. Yeah. And so with clients, I want them to and I work with them to develop atomic habits that are actually sustainable. So it becomes a way of life, not just, oh, our 12 weeks are over and I've, I've done that. It's like, yeah. well, now does it get worse? Yeah. <laughs> you know, are you going to relapse? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that, the, you know, the work of a good counselor, or good coach, like is ready to see like how sustainable that is. And it's not only... You know, it's three months, and then after that, woohoo! I'm back to square one, right? It's really about like uh, helping somebody creating sustainability more than peak that is not sustainable. Because often, you know, we can all is you, like we can all like you know run all day and lose a hundred pounds, but I mean, if you know, if we go back and we gain it, it's as exactly as you said, it's not you know, it's it's not it's not the journey that we desire at the end of the day. Um, Oh, I would talk about this all day. I love this. Uh, look, um, I would love to get to, I, I have a little game for you that is meant to uh, uh, get to know you as a human more than uh, as a LinkedIn personality and, and, and all that you are. Um, but before we get there, I'd like to ask um, if you were to provide or you know, wrap up with one idea that you want the audience to walk away with when it comes to creating their own pace and setting boundaries in order to find themselves, what would it be? It's easy to kind of say uh, the buzzwords of you're worthy, but if you never felt worthy, that's not going to land. Um, Jen, you know me, you know my content. I'm not one who throws up a quote from Pinterest and just says, okay, because a person that's had a traumatic childhood or traumatic adulthood, they don't believe it. They see it and they may even put a like on it, but it doesn't land well. Yeah. And when there comes to setting boundaries and joy, if you've not been doing it, you may not ever do it because the way you've lived has become a way of life. It has become so inculcated that that is the way that you do life mm. and you see the problem and it's cyclical. <laughs> And so I would encourage you, whether it's myself or whether it's someone else, get the help that you need to get, you know, have another person outside yourself that can actually check those blind spots, but that actually cares about you. You know, uh, I think a lot of times, especially with, you know, out of COVID, COVID hatched so many coaches. Everybody calls themselves a coach now. Mm. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I've been doing this since 2013. Mm -hmm. It took my journey long before that work with someone who is proven but also someone who has your best interest at heart otherwise you'll take the journey you'll wake up 10 years later and wonder man there's so much i should have could have and would have done and i never did because i spent my life putting out everyone else's fire and there was a fire turning in me if you want to unleash that fire i can definitely say i'd love to work with you mm -hmm. but also do the hard work and get ready to face yourself down the hard thing is actually owning your part in that owning your own codependency, owning your BS belief system. What we believe is what we do. I believe this chair is going to hold up all some 200 pounds in me. So I'm sitting in it. If I didn't believe that I'd have this desk standing up and I'd be talking to you. So again, if you want to change the belief system, that can actually help you establish boundaries and actually unleash the joy. And it's our joy yeah. that strengthens us to carry out the journey that we've been born to carry out. Absolutely. Absolutely shoulder dance to this right <laughs> yeah i mean you know I, we're we're so aligned i mean you know 
uh, uh, helping people find their joy and people find themselves through that. You know, joy is not only it's not only about, you know, laughing and, you know, shoulder dancing, even though, you know, for me, it's a big part of it. Uh, but uh, uh, no, it's seriously, it's, it's you know, it, it's about embracing the whole journey and, and being as, exactly as you said before. And I think that absolutely how you think what you believe is how you're going to live your life. So be ready, be ready to know yourself. And we are ready to know you, Jamal. To know you a little bit better because i've got i call it let's get to know the human rabbit fire questions so i have eight questions for you tick, tick, tick. you just have to answer you know as quickly as possible i'm game let's do it number one a book you would recommend anonymous by alicia Britt Scholey. Mm. think of an embarrassing story of yours how would you summarize it in two words? Hilarious and unexpected. <laughs> if you were to land on a desert island, would you be the one hunting for food or would you be the one building the hut? Hunting for food, I'm always hungry. Mm. Um, are you the type to eat in an ice cream cup or in an ice cream cone? Cone. Cone? What oh, yeah. dish you cook best? Mac and cheese. Mm, okay. What is your favorite word in another language? Mm, S'il vous plaît. <laughs> oh, yay. Super. Um, where are your car keys right now? On the front door. <laughs> <laughs> and how often do you floss? Ooh, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> Yo, you got me. Shoot. Dang. I'm doing my best to not make my dentist rich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well, that was that was getting to know you. See, we got to know you a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with me on the Min Green Ukulele podcast, Jamal. Where can we find more of your awesomeness? I'm most active on LinkedIn. Um you can and you can also find me at www.listendenspeak, just the way it's spelled, .com. That is my website. Uh, and also, if you go to LinkedIn, if you want an appointment or a discovery call, my Calendly link is right there. That's the easiest place to find me. Yes, perfect. And the links will be in the description of this podcast. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Continue being awesoming all over the place. Uh, and uh, we'll see you on LinkedIn. Yay! Peace. And for you at home, have an awesome rest of your day and choose joy. Thank you so much for watching or listening to the Man Green Ukulele podcast. You can follow and reach out to our guests at the links available in the description of this podcast. If you enjoyed our joyful conversation today, please consider subscribing or leaving a review. I would love to hear from you. You can find me on LinkedIn and you can come and say hello or if you want to hang out i host regular free master classes where we play our way to less stress and more joy so you can find all the information on my linkedin profile i hope to see you soon ciao